morning, everyone. We're reading this morning from Hebrews chapter 11. It's a longish passage, but it's worth reading. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel will speak even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was unable to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be, re will be reckoned. Abram reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so, in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. writer has 
ended his long explanation of who Jesus is and what he has done and is doing today, affirming that we are not of those who shrink back, but of those who believe. The key mark of the Christian is faith that a Christian is one whose belief is placed in Jesus Christ. In this passage of the letter, the writer does two things. First of all, he defines faith. Verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. A person with faith in Jesus Christ has the conviction that eternal, t uh, t eternal realities are in fact real, and also that those realities are theirs, and that conviction is a living power in his or her life. And then he goes on to say that here on earth we don't yet receive and experience that heaven promised to us. We realize that we don't really belong here, we're like foreigners or exiles in a strange land because heaven is our real home. God has prepared a city for us, the writer declares in verse 16, but we're not there yet. But by faith we know that our long-term future belongs there and that conviction begins to govern the way we live. Jesus Christ lives in us by his Spirit. And he is not now not only preparing that place for us, he's also preparing us to live in that place. That's faith. Then he gives a demonstration of how that faith worked out in the lives of eight believers in the book of Genesis. There was Abel and Enoch, Noah and Abraham, along with Sarah and Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. Every one of them is worth a study. They were great people. Look at them. Abel and Enoch were commended by God as righteous or as having pleased God by their lives of faith. Noah condemned the world and was also described as an heir of the righteousness which comes by faith. Abraham comes over as another heir of righteousness, the righteousness that is promised to those who believe. He even reasoned that God could raise the dead. And as you read the stories of all these people in Genesis, we find that they're flawed people, not perfect by any means, just like us. And yet we see that God counted them as righteous, as if they had never sinned at all. Not because they were sinless, but because they believed God. The same God who would later send Jesus, the truly righteous one. And as we put our faith in him, we too are counted as righteous. All these folk are prime examples of what Paul said to the Ephesians. By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not because of any good works you have done, lest anyone should boast. Consider Abraham, says Paul also to the Galatians. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. You could experience that too. I remember when I realized that for myself. I thought I could never ask God to count me as righteous. When I remembered how I just didn't deserve it. I thought God would give me a straight no. Once I put that together with the fact that the sinless Jesus had died for my sin once for all, that he offered me total forgiveness,
plus a heavenly home solely on the basis of my faith in him, there was nothing else I could do other than take him at his word and accept him by faith. It was life-changing for me, the best decision I ever made. The pure joy it brought me still lasts today. If you need help in putting that together for yourself, you've only to ask. Let's pray. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found. Before your throne, we sinners bend. Grace, pardon, life to us extend. That's our prayer today. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.